Hey everybody, welcome back to Adam Makes Beer, and today we are going to be discussing the tasting and full-on recipe for Excalibur, our imperial stout brewed with coffee. This is a really fun one for me. This is a beer that we brew one time a year, so it's, it's, it's cool to use a little bit different process. It's cool to be knocking out a big beer when usually you do a bunch of 5% beers. So anyhow, let's get into the recipe. This beer is 66.5% base malt. We used a domestic pills for this. Um, I like using pills for this because it helps to, gives you a little extra diastatic power. Maybe it helps you convert your sugar and your mash a little bit more readily. But there is also 10.6% flake dry. There is 7.8% Simpsons Crystal Light. There is 7.8% Munich Malt 1. There's 3.5% Brees Black Malt and 3.5% Brees Chocolate Malt. I mashed this at 154 degrees for a full hour. And this for me is essentially a first runnings beer, as I mentioned during the video. Just a real small sparge on that. If you are tracking water chemistry on this, my overall water build is 114 parts calcium, 44 parts sulfate, and 169 parts calcium chloride. For this beer, I don't have to use a bunch of acid to adjust water, maybe just a little bit in the sparge, because I did have a small amount of sparge water for this, but make sure you're factoring that into all of your numbers. We did end up getting 1.116 as our original gravity on this beer, and this beer does go down to 1028. I got a little bit more attenuation out of it this year, and so this beer is 11.5%. I did add 75 IBU of Warrior, Magnum, whatever you want to use, but just enough for about 75 IBU at 60 minutes. There is, for me, 100 pounds of dextrose that go into this beer. Um, we can kind of scale that down. It's, it's, it's 100 pounds, and this was 10 barrels. So 10 pounds per barrel. You can go ahead and throw a half pound to a pound of sugar in there. That might be a little bit high, but uh, in that range. I fermented this beer out a couple of different ways. I fermented it out with juice from Imperial, which did a great job. This year I fermented it out with a couple of bricks of Safel Dry 04, which was also great. Like I said, it was a little more attenuative, um, but turned out a really nice beer. After I got through fermentation on this and passed diacetyl, I crashed that beer down, blew the yeast off the bottom, and then I moved it into the bright tank cold. So 38, uh, pardon me, so 30, like 3, 34 degrees, and I'm moving that on to 15 barrels of coffee from our friends at, where are they from? Seven Hills Coffee Roaster here outside Cincinnati. They're awesome. We use 10 pounds coarse ground and five pound whole bean. We bagged that up. We put it into the bright tank and move that beer onto it. We'll move um, for that amount. We have about seven and a half barrels going into the bright tank. So you can kind of do that math with your coffee. And we leave about four day contact time on that. And I will rouse that with CO2 to kind of help mix that and disperse kind of that cold steep, uh, that cold brew coffee that we're kind of adding to the beer. During that time we're carbonating, we package off, and here we are. So you are pulling a little bit of alcohol off of this. When you're in 11%, you do get a little bit of booze on the nose. But booze sometimes implies like alcohol heat. I separate those things. Uh, to me, it's not like there's a shot of vodka in this, but there's some alcohol in there in that nose and it's warming, right? You're also getting kind of a nice fresh bag of coffee, aromatic kind of walk into the hot coffee house kind of aromatic with it, kind of supporting those big, rich, dense, almost kind of molasses-like syrupy notes coming off. A beer like this drinks so round and full. That higher residual sweetness in this, if we didn't mention, we did hit 11.16 with this beer and it did go down to 10.28. But that bigger body on that, and we do use real roast malt in this, so there is some nice real roasty, deep espresso 
maybe even like the slightest edge of ash that you can sometimes get, but it's really a nuance. It's not like this big ashy burnout beer or anything like that, but some nice roast complexity. And that coffee and those roast characters just kind of layer up on top of each other. It's big, rich, and again, really a beer that's great for this time of year. I'm recording this in early December and Man, it hits the spot when those days start getting a little colder. It's not the it's not the up north cold Michigan uh, winters that I'm used to, but hey, down here it still gets colder than I wish it would. So, anyways, a beer like this is going to lay down well for you if you want to put this into bottles and age it. That's great. Just keep a close eye, as always, on sanitation, oxygen, ingress, stuff like that. You can lay a beer down like this and it will age great. It's got a lot of alcohol, got a lot of roast, and over time it'll just get better and better and better. The coffee on something like this may not age out the best. So if you wanted to just kind of do like a straight version of it, that would be great. Sometimes over time coffee can get a little janky. Um, kind of an oxidized coffee flavor tends to be like a little bit of green pepper, a little bit of bell pepper. So anyways, it's a fun beer to do. Hopefully you enjoyed this series. If you did, please give a like, subscribe. You can't even become a member of my channel right now. Check on the channel to see what benefits come with that. But shoot, as always, have fun brewing and I'll see you next time. Cheers.